Hi, I'm Jennifer, an MCAT teacher and content creator here at Kaplan. In this video, Greg, one of our expert instructors, will take you through what we've identified as one of the toughest CARS passages from Kaplan's free MCAT practice test. This test was designed by Kaplan's question writers and validated by Kaplan's psychometrics team to be as representative of the actual MCAT as possible, so you know you're getting a great representation of what you will see on test day. This passage is a humanities passage on science education. Follow along to see how Greg attacks this passage using Kaplan's passage and question strategy. According to the Kaplan method for CARS passages, I should decide on a reading approach for each passage based on personal preference and my reaction to this specific text. I'll start reading and determine which approach to use for the rest of it. This first paragraph is extremely short, with only one long sentence. The language is complicated, but there are also clear emphasis words that tell me what the important points are. There was a shift from evolution to creationism in the past, and Darwin wasn't the first to think about evolution. This combination makes me decide to outline this passage, meaning I'll write a short, simple note summarizing each paragraph. Sometimes very short paragraphs don't need an outline note, but the author's strong language in this one leads me to write a note here. I jot down the major ideas I noticed and move on to the next paragraph. Paragraph 2 is similar to the first one, very short and with clear emphasis words. I'm pleased with my decision to outline so far. The author goes on to clarify that creationism isn't science and shouldn't be taught in science class, but that schools still need to face and discuss it. I summarize these points in my outline and move on. Paragraph 3 introduces Carl Sagan, then mentions that the world is becoming more irrational and superstitious. Sagan is a defender of scientific education, and he mentions our demon-haunted world, which seems like a reference to irrational and unscientific beliefs. The author appears to be implying that Sagan thinks science education is an important part of holding these beliefs back. I make this point in my outline and go on to the next paragraph. Paragraph 4 starts with a definition of evolution which is significant since the idea was introduced back in paragraph 1. Then the author repeats another idea implied in the first paragraph, stating that the Greeks were the first to think about evolution. The rest of the paragraph is devoted to examples of Greek thought on this topic. I highlight the dates that are mentioned. This is my standard approach with dates and names that I don't think are important enough to include in my outline. However, the names of the ancient Greeks who studied evolution are worth noting, although I won't think too hard about the details of their theories. I build my outline note off the points at the beginning of the paragraph and cite the Greeks the author mentioned as examples. Paragraph 3 introduces a new voice, Christian philosophers. The word because indicates that their argument starts with the reason or evidence for something, which I know is less significant than their conclusion, so I read past it quickly. Their final point, which is significant, is that God created all creatures. I highlight the names that were mentioned as a reminder, since I know I won't be including them in the outline. Then I continue reading. This Christian belief is given a name, natural theology and it was widely accepted before Darwin. I highlight another date for the same reason as before, in case this time period is mentioned in a question. The paragraph ends by pointing out that after Darwin, teaching evolution was prioritized in the new British school system. This seems to reflect a change from the domination of natural theology. I summarize these points in my outline and move on. Paragraph 6 starts by mentioning Thomas Huxley, a supporter of Darwin, who helped to set the new British curriculum mentioned at the end of the last paragraph. The United States was going in a different, more religiously influenced direction, 
with some states banning the teaching of evolution in public schools. At this point, Huxley feels like a side character who I won't be including in my outline, since the focus of the paragraph is shifting to the U.S. So I'll highlight his name and move on. This paragraph now introduces the case of John Scopes, a teacher who was convicted for teaching evolution. I highlight the date of his trial, then read that it was actually a victory for evolution and helped to slow down creationism. But since that time, opponents of evolution have introduced a new religious idea called creation science. The author doesn't explain what it is, so I expect I'll probably hear about it in the next paragraph. Instead, I highlight the last date that appears in the paragraph and summarize its major takeaways in my outline. The consistent thread through this large paragraph is the religious resistance to teaching evolution, and I jot down the major milestones I just read about. As I expected, paragraph 7 starts by describing creation science further. It's a term that creationists use to make their views seem more legitimate so that they can demand the teaching of creationism in schools. The author forcefully states that they are opposed to creation science, reminding me that, as discussed earlier in paragraph two, the author has a clear negative view of creationism. I highlight the last date mentioned in the passage, then move on and make my last outline note, focusing on the author's strong opinion about creation science. Now that I've completed my outline, the Kaplan method suggests shifting my attention to the questions. I'm well prepared to tackle them because of the careful way I read and distilled the passage. The Kaplan method for cars questions begins with identifying the question type so that I can approach it as efficiently as possible. Question 25 asks how a phrase from the passage should be interpreted, so the AAMC categorizes it as a foundations of comprehension question, and Kaplan further classifies it as a definition in context question. The next step is rephrasing the question in simple words so that it'll be easier to remember while looking for the answer. This question asks for how to interpret Carl Sagan's quote, and now I need to investigate the answer. Since I outlined the passage, I'll typically refer to my notes when investigating a question. But since this question is asking about a quotation, which is the kind of specific detail that I usually don't include in my outline, I'll go straight to the paragraph that the question is referencing and read the quote directly. Sagan's quote uses dramatic language like demon-haunted world and enveloping darkness while referring to what science can help humanity to resist. Now that I've reread it, I do remember that this quote was important to my understanding of paragraph 3. So I go back to my outline and see that Sagan was writing about science resisting irrational beliefs. At this point, the Kaplan method recommends making a prediction, putting the answer that I've identified into words to make it easier to recognize the correct answer choice. I phrase my prediction based on what I noticed in paragraph 3, and then scan the answer choices. None of them is a perfect match, which does happen. Even very good predictions won't always precisely match the correct answer choice, and I can still identify the right one using the work I've done up to this point. The next step is to look at the choices individually, eliminating those that I'm confident are wrong. Choice A is incorrect because Sagan's quote makes it clear that his belief in science challenges ideas of things like demons. Choice B starts off accurately, since the quote does refer to people being naturally superstitious to some degree. But to say that they'll always be dominated by superstition doesn't match Sagan's quote. He thinks that science can save people from it. So B is also wrong. Choice C starts off correctly because Sagan does value the teaching of science, according to his quote. But the reason given here doesn't match anything in the paragraph. Understanding human beings isn't one of Sagan's goals, so this choice is also incorrect. Since D is the only choice left, it has to be right, but I'll check it first, just to be certain. Although it doesn't mention the importance of science, 
which was part of my prediction, what makes D different from the other answer choices is that nothing in it is inaccurate. Sagan did think that people resorted to irrational thinking, so I can confidently pick this choice. The first step of the Kaplan method for cars questions is to determine the question type so that I can find the most efficient path to answer it. Question 26 presents a theory that seemingly wasn't mentioned in the passage and asks how it should be characterized, so it belongs in the AAMC category of reasoning beyond the text. Additionally, Kaplan types it as an apply question. Continuing to follow the method, I rephrase the question in simpler language. This will make it easier for me to search for the answer. The question stem itself doesn't give any hints about where the answer might appear in the passage. But since I outlined it, I'll refer to these notes first for clues. The new information presented in the question stem suggests that Wallace's theory was similar to Darwin's, meaning that Wallace believed in evolution with a twist that he also believed there was a supernatural force involved in the process. In the mind of the author, this second idea is connected to creationism, which the author dislikes and considers irrational. And it's also connected to the definition of natural theology in paragraph 5. So Wallace is a believer in evolution with a bit of creationism or natural theology thrown in. The next step of the Kaplan method is to put my answer into words by making a prediction. This is very helpful as it lets me avoid the annoying work of disproving every wrong answer choice. Instead, I can look for the choice that matches the correct idea I've already visualized. Putting my analysis of Wallace's theory into words, I'm immediately drawn to answer choice B because it mentions natural theology. But I didn't consider Huxley when making my prediction, so I need to determine how his views connect to the question to decide whether choice B is right or wrong. The name Huxley doesn't appear in my outline, so my habit of highlighting all the names that aren't important enough to be outlined will be very helpful here, making it easier for me to scan through the passage and find where Huxley is discussed. I find it at the beginning of paragraph 6, where he is mentioned as a supporter of Darwin. Since Darwin was a prominent believer in evolution, Huxley must have supported evolution theory too. So the part of choice B that seems unrelated to my prediction is actually just a different way of expressing the same idea. B is a perfect match for my prediction, and I can pick it confidently. The Kaplan method for cars questions begins with identifying the question type, which will help me to plan out the quickest approach to answering it. Question 27 asks about the author's beliefs as expressed in the passage, so it's an AAMC Foundations of Comprehension question that Kaplan further categorizes as a detail question. The next step of the method is to rephrase the question in simple language to make it easier to remember. This one is asking for the person who contributed most to keeping creationism from being taught in schools. Next, I'll plan out how to investigate the correct answer. I outlined the passage, and this question is asking about one of its main topics, the teaching of creationism in schools. So I'll check my outline first to see if it'll provide an answer without needing to go back to the text itself. Although creationism in schools is mentioned at various points in my outline, the idea of blocking creationism from schools is mentioned directly in paragraph 6, where the Scopes trial is given credit for it. Now that I've found the answer, Kaplan's method suggests putting it into words as a prediction, which will make it easier to sort through the answer choices. My prediction is a simple one in this case, and it matches answer choice A. The Kaplan method for cars question starts by identifying the question type, which will give me a clearer path towards answering it. Question 28 presents new information and asks what effect it would have on the passage, so the AAMC classifies it as a reasoning beyond the text question 
and Kaplan would additionally categorize it as strengthen, weaken, beyond the text. The next steps of the method are to rephrase the question in simpler words, then investigate the answer, either in the text or the outline that I wrote. I'll always default to consulting the outline first, since it focuses on the most important claims in the passage. The new information in the question stem is relevant to topics from the text, even though it doesn't mention them. It addresses competing explanations, like the theories of evolution and creationism discussed in the text, and suggests that letting students examine them leads to more rationality. So the new info is related to the idea from paragraph 2 that creationism, a theory the author dislikes, should be confronted in schools, and it helps to justify the author's claim here. The Kaplan method next suggests that I put this idea into words as a prediction, which I can use to locate the correct answer as quickly as possible. I do so, and it's a great match for answer choice B. According to the Kaplan method, the first step to answering Carr's questions is to identify the question type. Question 29 asks for the answer choice that has a particular role in the passage, so the AAMC categorizes it as a reasoning within the text question, and Kaplan further classifies it as a function question. Next, I should rephrase the question in the simplest language possible to make it easier to look for an answer. I need to find the answer choice that is supported by a specific example somewhere in the passage. The next step is to investigate the text for an answer, but since the question stem doesn't give any specific sense of what claim it's referring to, there's no way to research the correct answer without looking at the answer choices. Since I outlined the passage, I can use my notes as a guide to investigate each answer choice in turn. The passage discusses the idea of choice A at several points, first in paragraph 1 and later in paragraph 4, where my outline makes it clear that the passage did give examples demonstrating that Darwin was not the first to pioneer the idea of evolution. So A is the correct answer. The first step of the Kaplan method for Carr's questions is to determine the question type, which will give me a clear path to answering it. Question 30 asks for the passage claim that is supported by a different part of the passage, so the AAMC describes it as a reasoning within the text question, and Kaplan further classifies it as a strengthen, weaken within the text question. Next, the method requires me to rephrase the question stem itself in simpler language. This will make it easier to rely on my memory of the question when searching for the answer. Here, I need to find the claim in the passage that is justified by the discussion of Carl Sagan in paragraph 3. Since my approach to the passage was outlining, and since Sagan was a major enough figure to be included in that outline, I'll start the next step of the method, investigating the correct answer, by checking my outline for relevant information. According to my notes, Sagan's main points were that teaching science is important for fighting irrational beliefs, so it's very likely that the correct answer will involve this idea. As the final steps of the method, I put this idea into words and then compare it directly to the answer choices. While none of the choices talk directly about fighting against irrational beliefs or the importance of teaching science, I notice that choice B does address science classrooms, so I'll focus on this one first. Instead of the claims I predicted, it suggests that creationism should not be taught. This is definitely an idea that the author agrees with. By the end of the passage, it's clear that they think creationism is illegitimate and it seems clear that both Sagan and the author associate creationism with irrational thinking. So this choice actually matches my prediction. Indirect matches like these happen fairly often, since there are many different ways to frame a particular idea, but my prediction and outline together were enough to locate the correct answer. <laughs> 